Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome into this Adobe Premiere Pro tutorial brought to you, as always, by tutvid.com. My name is Nathaniel Dodds, and today we're talking about audio. I've got a whole ton of different microphones here. Rhodes Video Mic Pro, the newer version, the older version, a couple Zoom recorders, uh, Smart Lav Plus, a number of things like that. Not sponsored by Zoom or Rode, although Rode does provide me with some free microphones that I absolutely adore. Um, but this video is not sponsored. Um, that's not really the point, though. Uh, we're going to talk about getting better audio in Adobe Premiere Pro. Now, I did a tutorial. I'll link to it here. Um, I did a tutorial not that long ago, maybe like six, seven months ago on how to get amazing audio in Premiere Pro. The problem is Adobe just updated Premiere Pro a couple months ago and made a bunch of the filters and effects that I use obsolete. So I thought it was time to go in and do a proper multi-channel compressor tutorial. We're going to use this monster to get some super cool sounding audio. It's actually one of the best ways to kind of achieve that radio voice that you'd always wished you'd had and just level out your voice and really make it sound uh, interesting, but you can take it over the top and really make it sound bad. Now, the reason I bring out these recorders and all of these microphones and everything is because uh, garbage in, garbage out. If you have crappy sound quality going into Premiere Pro, you're probably going to have crappy sound quality coming out of Premiere Pro, uh, however much it's fun to think that you can kind of polish a turd or, you know, put lipstick on a pig, uh, to use a number of cliches uh, that always make me chuckle. Uh, but if you get a nice audio recorder, the Zoom H5, amazing. It's got a really nice stereo microphone on top of it. Um, highly recommend it. And you can plug in external XLR or, um, you know, kind of standard, smaller lavalier microphones. The The Rode SmartLav Plus is a great little lavalier microphone. It's like 80 bucks uh, with a little $15 adapter. You can plug it into a $100 recorder like the Zoom H1. You can record directly to your smartphone. They've got a great app that costs like six or seven bucks you can record into um, and get that sound file out. The sound file does however need to be processed um, and then of course you have stuff like the video mic and the video mic pro from Rode um, and even bigger and badder stuff you know you could go with the the Procaster and a straight XLR microphone get a great feed going into your file that's the number one most important thing and once you have something like that we can jump into Premiere Pro which is what we're going to do right now now I have here uh, this file and I've made my uh, I've made my audio track much bigger here uh, let me just back it up so we can actually see it I just held down uh, the shift key and I'm gonna just move back I held down my shift key and just uh, hold over the tracks here and with my shift key down I can go one two three four five six just I'm just scrolling I'm scrolling my mouse wheel upward and it's just gonna make those tracks bigger so I can really see my video track which I don't really need to be concerned with here more importantly I can see my audio waveform so if if your track is tiny you're gonna see it but it's it's tiny so I like to make it a little bit bigger now as I play through this um, I can I'm watching here on my my side sort of audio monitor I want my I want my finished volume to be probably around negative three decibels at zero decibels it's being blown out we're losing uh, we're losing audio wave if you will the sound is cutting out it's being chopped it sounds really bad um, I think a lot of broadcast stuff is around negative 12 I'm no like audio professional when it comes to this stuff but I'm pretty sure I heard somewhere by somebody that negative 12 is usually around kind of broadcast but I like to push it and be like negative six to negative three for my YouTube stuff. But you can see here for this video, it's kind of bouncing between negative 18 and negative 12. So I want to pump it up a little bit right out of the gate. And in order to do that, what I do is I select my audio track. I've got two tracks here. Um, I'm working with just the first one to begin with. Select this audio track, right click and choose audio gain. So gain is the input volume into your track. Volume, which would be grabbing this slider here, right? You can grab this slider and say, hey, why don't we boost the volume? Well, that's the output volume. I like to work with the input volume. So I'm gonna right click and go audio gain. And I'm just gonna straight up adjust the gain by three decibels plus three decibels, hit okay. You're gonna see it's gonna push everything upward a little bit. And now I'm bouncing more consistently close to negative 12 on my, uh, my my monitor here. Now the next thing that I want to do is get rid of any background noise. It's a, it's a kind of clean feed that I have coming in, um, but if you do have background noise and hissing and popping, things like that, you can go to audio effects and choose the adaptive noise reduction. Drag it out and drop it on your audio track. The beautiful thing about this, you can go in and play with the individual parameters. I could do an entire tutorial on what each of these do and how you can really fine tune this, but the beautiful thing about adaptive noise reduction is it's pretty smart. It goes in and I mean here you can see we've got all of these options just as bigger sliders uh, but it goes in and it listens to your audio and it finds the the audio that really needs to be neutralized and it cleans it up and does a really really a pretty good job pretty much automatically now one just kind of warning that I'll give you about this is 
It usually takes a couple seconds of listening to your audio track before it latches on to the mistake. So if you're previewing it here in your timeline, it might sound like it's not catching the hissing or buzzing or whatever until maybe three, four seconds into your audio. Um, but that's just, it's just the filter doing its thing or the effect doing its thing and uh, kind of latching on. But it's a really smart uh, effect. It's, it's, they've, they've brought in the full power of Adobe Audition in the adaptive noise reduction with Adobe CC 2017, that update. Uh, so it's really exciting to see. It's really an awesome denoiser, um, adaptive noise reduction, super good stuff. Uh, next up, I like to add a little mastering. So I'll drop some mastering on here. Um, and mastering is going to come before we go to our multi-channel uh, compressor. I'm going to hit the edit option here. And typically what I like to do is I throw a little bit, a little bit of subtle clarity on here. I tick on low shelf enable, right? Low shelf enable. And I also tick on high shelf enable. And I'll just usually take my, my, uh, my midpoint here and I'll boost it a little bit. And I'll also boost my highs uh, just a little bit just to give give the voice a little bit of snap right a little bit of high end like sharpness and sometimes depending on what it sounds like I'll, I'll just move my playhead out here and listen a little bit I'll boost my lows a little bit here if I push the highs up too much it's gonna it's gonna it's almost gonna sound painful to listen to so you got to find that that right spot and I always make sure I kill the reverb and I also get rid of loudness maximizer my, uh, maximizer I turn them down and I'll roll I'll roll with something like this uh, and I'll close that out so there we go I've got my mastering um, just a nice little effect I find it just adds like a, some crispness to the audio I like it uh, now we're gonna come to the multiband compressor this is where this is where we get into the meat of things so the multiband compressor super useful uh, one quick thing about the multiband compressor generally you want it to be the last of the effects that you add here uh, to your audio channel so you can see I'm applying it here after I do my adaptive noise reduction and after I do the little bit of mastering that I do and I'm gonna hit edit and up comes this big behemoth of a um, dialogue box now right off the bat I like to begin with the broadcast preset broadcast preset it gives me a great split uh, between into my sort of four channels here if you will or four segments uh, my super lows my lows my highs and the really highs over here and that's what these four sort of slides and all of these options are attacking. I can change this if I like by just you know sliding or grabbing my points and moving them around. I'm just going to reset broadcast. Well, let me just go to like drums and then choose broadcast again to bring me back to the original broadcast. And you can see it's given me all kinds of stuff and all kinds of settings that I really don't like. So I'm going to close this out and really you got to delete the whole effect. So right click clear and just apply a new multiband compressor. All right, let's hit the edit button once more. So what do we want to do here in the multiband compressor? Well, like I said, it it's really it's breaking everything down into these kind of four segments here. Uh, and what I like to do is focus on the limiter first. So what the limiter is going to do is it's going to allow me to set a margin, and I'm going to set it. Uh, typically, if if you're working just with spoken word, you want your your margin, the margin of your limiter, to be negative three. If you're mixing vocals and like music, or you have music mixed in with the voice, you probably want it to be around negative four point five decibels. And what this limiter is going to do, I'm going to set this negative three. It's never going to allow my my audio track to exceed negative three. So remember if we're at, we're at negative three over here on our audio uh, monitor, that's great. If we get up to zero at any point, the audio is cutting, right? It, you're getting too high. So setting a limiter of negative three is going to always force our audio. It, it just the, the loudest of loud things is never going to be allowed to get higher than negative three. So that that's great. That's exactly what we want. We only have spoken word here. So negative three for this is just perfect. But by limiting all the highs to negative three, we're also going to be able to go in and boost some of the lower stuff, uh, which is really part of the beauty of uh, this multiband compressor is not only can you target specific uh, levels within your audio. And by the way, if I begin to play this here, let's just check this out. If I begin to play this, I can see a heads up display of like the yellows here. I can see, you know, okay, there's some of my mids. Uh, the green, there's not really much of that. The super highs, there's not really any of that. And then the, the teal here is kind of this, you know, the teal stuff, the 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 lows in in uh, in my voice and in what we're and what we're working on here. So what I want to do is I want to look to set the threshold of each of these kind of at the the decibel point where up unto their reaching. So I can see here that I'm, I'm at like about negative 24 here with the lows. So I can drag this slider down to about negative 24. You can see the threshold negative 25. Great. Uh, and when I do that, I can then reduce or increase the gain a little bit. So I'll probably increase the gain to maybe like four, four decibels will boost it. And I'm going to leave the ratio at two to one. Um, now the way that the ratio 
ratio works in this is that it, it basically is that it specifies the amount of attenuation uh, is the technical term. The, the amount of attenuation that's going to be applied to kind of that frequency, that area of the audio that you're working on, sort of that band, if you will, here within the multiband compressor. And something like a ratio of two to one is just going to indicate uh, that, that if the signal exceeds the threshold, so we set our threshold negative 25, if it exceeds the threshold by like two decibels, it's going to be attenuated down to one decibel above uh, the threshold. So, you know, if a, if a signal exceeds a threshold by something like, I don't know, let's say 12 decibels, it's going to be attenuated down to six decibels above it. Uh, and then the same thing, three to one, it's going to be three to one, five to one would be five to one, eight to one, you know, or so on and so forth. But it's kind of complicated. I'm going to work, I'm going to leave it here at two to one. I'm going to try to make this as simple as possible. There's an insane amount of detail on multiband compressors out there online. Uh, if you're really interested in getting into it, the multiband compressor, it's an incredibly powerful tool. There's I mean, you can see there's tons and tons of different features that you can play around with. Attack and release, that has to do, think of it as like a fade in, fade out, um, as as it's sort of working on audio that's um, getting higher or lower than your threshold point. And maybe I'll increase the threshold here to like negative 30, so there's really a bunch of uh, audio to which we're applying this attenuation. Uh, it, the attack and release is going to sort of that that's how quickly it's going to sort of fade into and fade out of the bits that are being compressed so you can see these these red dots that's showing us how much the multiband compressor is doing to that particular uh segmented area of our audio if you will so again kind of complicated but it's what we're working with here so let's come over here to uh the the yellows here closer to the mids and let's just play through the audio and we're we're pretty high here, so let's we're gonna drag this down to like negative twelve, negative fifteen, and we'll set the gain to probably about two decibels. I think I'll like whoop, not negative two decibels. Let's go positive two decibels. I'm gonna play through this a little bit. Maybe I'll I'll push this down even further to like negative twenty five. Yeah, I think I kind of like negative twenty five. A gain of two decibels. Ratio two to one. Great. Attack and release. I'm gonna leave them at the default, uh, and then over here, I'm just gonna drop this as well. To about 25 decibels. And I think I'm really going to boost the gain here. So we're really pushing up the amount of volume. You can see what we changed there, right? You can see how much more of the green we can see now. Right? If I set this back to zero, uh, set the threshold back to zero, right? And we play through this a little bit. You can see the greens are they're kind of a little low. Then we'll pull this down to about negative 25-ish, boost the gain to about seven, and we'll play through this a little bit. And you can even hear the difference if we hit the bypass button. And we can hear what it's doing. It's really flattening out some of those highs, boosting up some of the lows. And we're getting kind of a, you know, it's an interesting effect. Again, you don't want to take it too far. If you take it too far, you can really start, you know, doing some damage. And we do have some highs popping in there. Let's see. Uh, whoops, I'm going to hit escape. I didn't want to change my ratio. Uh, I'm going to play this again. I'm going to pull this down. I'm going to pull this down. So probably about negative, you know, somewhere between negative 36 and negative 40. We can see that's where these really highs, they're getting up to about negative 36, if you will. Uh, and then the gain, I'll probably, I think I want to boost that a little bit. So maybe I'll go like, let's try 10 decibels. We're really going to add, again, we're really boosting those highs. Let's listen to it and see if it sounds good or bad. Sounds a little artificial, so let's reduce the gain a little bit. We'll knock it down to maybe like five or six. All right, I kind of like it. So you can go through. Um, the, the key is you want to like you want to watch where this audio meter is getting up to, and you probably want to move your threshold down to about that point, maybe a little bit lower. Mess around with the gain, push it up, push it down, see what sounds good depending on your channels. Um, again, if you really want to look into how the multiband compressor works, because obviously the best way to use a multiband compressor is to really know what you're doing when it comes to using a multiband compressor. I'm just kind of giving you the idiot's guide to it. Um, there's people out there who are way more knowledgeable on this than I am but just know this is a super duper powerful effect and if you even can use it a little bit right you can really make your audio sound pretty pretty good and you can boost the output gain of your multiband compressor as well if you really want to push that volume up you can watch here as this bounces around and really push it up and try to get it closer to that negative three and 
and, uh, you know, help out your entire clip. Now, one sort of side tip about uh, using a multiband compressor is uh, to get sort of a smoother, more difficult to notice the bad sort of stuff uh, about the multiband compressor uh, is use longer attack and release times. Try to stick with kind of lower ratios um, and use smaller amounts of gain, either reduction or boosting. You don't want to go too crazy. I'm probably even going a little bit too crazy here, but I'm trying to really accentuate it so we can hear the difference. In fact, I'll play with and without for you in just a second. Um, but by re by increasing, excuse me, attack and release, you're going to sort of help fade the effect in and out a little bit more effectively. Um, you really don't want it to be noticeable where the multiband compressor is doing compressing when the threshold is crossed uh, and vice versa. So I'll just close this here. And we now have our adaptive noise reduction mastering and a multiband compressor added to this. Um, let's just do a quick, let's just listen to it here. Maybe I should turn my volume up a little bit here. So I'm going to try it again. And for 2006, I wanted to sit right down here, but I need it to be a little bit bigger. So I'm going to open up my character panel. If you don't have the character panel, and now I'm going to shut those effects off. So just listen to this. And for 2006, I wanted to sit right down here, but I need it to be a little bit bigger. So I'm going to open up my character panel. If you don't so that's without any of the effects. The audio is just much softer. It doesn't sound as crisp. It doesn't sound as sharp. And again, maybe I took it a little bit too far with multi-band compressor, primarily because I'm trying to make a point here. Let's assume that you went through and you just killed it with this audio effect you absolutely love what you have it's what you want to use for the majority of your recordings and you're doing something like I'm doing where I set up my recorder and it's the same thing every time when I'm recording these videos well that probably means you want to create a preset so you can do this by selecting holding down your shift key or I'm starting holding down your command or control key and select all three of those effects that we added in our effect controls panel right click and choose save preset I'm gonna save this preset as just underscore uh, AAA or something just to get it to the top of my presets panel I'm going to hit OK, and if I come up here to presets, you can see I have underscore AAA. Now, if I want to take this and apply it to my audio out here, I can do that. Now, before I do that, I'm going to right click, and remember, we boost our audio, so I'm going to adjust my audio gain, plus three in the decibel department. Boom, I'm going to boost that up. I can drag that set of presets out. You can see I've got adaptive noise reduction, mastering, and multiband compressor. They're all applied to this clip, and my audio will just beautifully and seamlessly go from clip to clip. Now, I am going to select both of these audio clips. I'm going to go edit and choose remove attributes and I'm going to remove all of that stuff hit OK and you can see if I select any one single clip all that junk is gone uh, let's say I've uh, changed the gain or even if I haven't changed the gain I can select multiple clips I can hit the letter G which is the hotkey for audio gain and I could say you know what I'm gonna take my audio gain back down so I'm gonna go negative three in the decibel department it's gonna reduce my gain and it's gonna reduce the gain for both clips why why is this important why am I showing this to you well because if you wanted to boost that gain across multiple clips hit the letter G when you've selected the audio tracks adjust gain by plus 3 dB, hit OK, boom, they both boost up, and you can drag your preset out and hover over one of the clips, and it's going to apply to every selected clip. So now I've got adaptive noise reduction mastering and multiband compressor there, and also right over here. So doing and using these audio effects in Premiere Pro never been more powerful than it is now. It, Adobe's really done a great job. They're moving more and more of the power and functionality of Adobe Audition over from Audition to Premiere Pro. There's still some things you're going to want to go into Audition for. Um, and I just wanted to give you guys a, a, a very basic primer on multiband compressor. I don't even know as much about it. I'm not as fluid with it as I should be. It's a hugely powerful tool. Um, in my mind, I look at it kind of like it's the curves of Premiere Pro. Curves is a, a very powerful yet somewhat complex tool over in Photoshop. Uh, Multiband compressor, at least when it comes to audio, seems to be kind of about the same. It's incredibly powerful. You're really going to love it, and I don't even know that I did it justice, but I just wanted to get your feet wet. I want to get you comfortable using it because it's an important tool, and it's a powerful tool in Premiere Pro. If you have some tips about the multiband compressor that you think are particularly pertinent, uh, that you think would help people conceptualize what's going on with multiband compressor a little bit better, drop a comment down below. I love getting those kind of comments. If it teaches me something as well, that's a double win because I learned something, you learned something, we all learned something. That's why I'm putting these videos up. I love it, I love it, I love it, I love it, I love it. Go ahead and leave a little like on this video. Smash that thumbs up button. I like that too. Uh, <coughs> we're getting emotional over here. Um, make sure you also hit the red button, the subscribe button, so you never miss another video coming out of the TutVid channel. And for creating amazing audio for your videos, you can take a somewhat 
medium range or even low end. I think this is only 100 bucks for the Zoom H1. You can take a lower end microphone and get really, really nice audio out of it, comparatively speaking at least, using some of these functionalities, uh, some of this functionality and these features in Adobe Premiere Pro, mastering, multiband compressor, adaptive noise reduction, and everything in between. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. That's it. Get it, got it, good. Nathaniel Dodson, tutvid.com. I'll catch you in the next one.